What is user documentation? That's the question we're going to discuss in this video. Hi, my name is Josh. I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ and I have over 10 years of technical writing experience. Before we fully dive into the subject here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and like this video and that way you can keep up to date with all our future videos on technical writing to help you become better at the job. Now with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. User documentation refers to the documentation for a product or service provided to the end users. It's designed to assist end users to use a product or service. This is often referred to as user assistance. The user documentation is a part of the overall product delivered to the customer. So it's part of that product experience. The presence of the word user in the phrase suggests an electronic or software product. No matter if your product is a lawnmower or a piece of accounting software, there's always a learning curve for new users. Your user documentation helps users through the initial learning phase and teaches them to be more successful with your product. Thinking of user documentation, this real life example may pop up in your head. Sarah went to the store and bought a new refrigerator and she went ahead and tried to install it at our house. Well, in order to do that, one of the things that she needed is a user manual. And she used a user manual to study the different features and how to set it up. And she noticed some really interesting features that she could use from a refrigerator, like a special cooling feature to help make ice quickly, and also how to operate the LED touch panel. And all these things happened because she read that user manual that a technical writer created. And you can see just from this example how it can be helpful. In this case, it isn't software, but a physical product. And that's just one example because be it software or application, they have their own user documentation ready to assist end users out of confusion. There is considerable overlap among the three, the user instruction, manual, and guide. And to some extent, they can be interchangeable. They can be coupled together or with other terms, as in the instruction manual or reference guide. In addition here, there are many similar terms like handbook, guidebook, or primer, and it can get a bit confusing. For example, Apple labels the documentation section of its website as manuals, yet the documents themselves are the iPhone user guide, iPad user guide, and so on. Therefore, it's safe for us to say that the overall meaning stays the same. So you can be flexible in the terminology you use when referencing user documentation but just don't be too flexible because you don't want to confuse your audience. Now, you should be asking, why is there a need to have a user guide in the first place? There's two reasons. It gives users an easy reference guide. Great user documentation doesn't just have to be for customers. Your product support team can use documentation to help better support your customers when they call. When you include essential pieces, such as a table of contents or index, they can quickly find the information they need. And number two here, it reduces calls. People often call support when they can't figure something out. But if customers can figure it out themselves, they're far less likely to need help. In fact, more than 70% of people prefer to use a company's website for help rather than use a phone or email to get in contact with them and then wait for a response. The Help Center for Evernote is a classic example of an online knowledge base or user documentation. Its knowledge base provides an incredible end user experience for new and existing users, especially with a prominent search feature. Understanding how to use Evernote efficiently without its help center documentation would be very difficult to do. And that's why it exists. Here we have the knowledge base for HubSpot. In this knowledge base, they have everything from certifications to video training and much more. This further stresses the importance of user documentation and the different ways and formats it can be in and how it can be super helpful for the end user. Similarly, many others support end users with knowledge bases where customers and users can enter their questions and search for answers. Here we can see instructional materials that may go with your product to help someone learn to properly use it or in the case of physical products, even put it together. This is a typical example of end user documentation for physical products. Now let's talk about essential elements in user documentation. They are plain language, simplicity, visuals, a focus on the problem, a logical hierarchy and flow. And we're gonna go ahead and dive into these a little bit more. So we have a table of contents, searchable content, accessible content, good design, feedback from real users, and links to further resources. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at these attributes and see what they entail. The first most important element to consider in user documentation is to use simple, plain language whenever possible to help your customers understand even the most complex concepts. Remember to write for the user and not for the developer. Write in an easy to read way. And make sure to keep it as simple as possible to achieve its goal. This applies both to the documentation content as well as its design. Long blocks of text and pages tightly packed with written and graphic content can make user guides or manuals feel intimidating and unfriendly. So it's very important to structure your graphics in the right way and we'll talk about that a little bit more. One of the helpful things you can do is add visual content including images, annotated screenshots, graphics, and videos. It shows users how your product works. And we saw that in the HubSpot example. They don't have to read as they can see it. Popular ways of including visual content are screenshots that we have mentioned. You can even do things like GIFs. You can use screen recordings, tutorial videos, and many more formats in order to provide these visuals. And here we have a checklist that your visuals can go through. First, it's important to seek the help of a graphic specialist for drawings that require a high degree of accuracy and precision. As a technical writer, it's your job to understand the basics of creating graphics, but it doesn't mean you're an expert. And you also wanna show equipment and other objects from the point of view of the person who will use them. So not from your point of view, but the user. And draw the parts of an object in proportion to one another and identify any parts that are enlarged or reduced. When a sequence of drawings is used to illustrate a process, make sure to also arrange them from left to right or from top to bottom on the page. Label parts in the drawing so that the text references to them are clear and consistent. Oftentimes when people say, hey, in the graphic above, the graphic below, well, how far above, how far below? Be specific. Here's an example visual that's well done and is able to effectively highlight the different features of a product. Now that we've seen that, we wanna talk about good graphics. Good graphics engage readers in ways that text simply cannot. According to research by Sung and Mayer from 2012, providing any graphics, good or bad, makes readers like the document more. However, only instructive graphics help readers learn and ultimately get their desired result from the product. The next essential element in user documentation is to focus on the problem to be solved. That's where you have to make sure to show users how to perform tasks with your product, followed by logical hierarchy and flow the element that gives structure to your document. Good documentation needs a hierarchy of headings and subheadings that lets a user know what each section will show them. And that hierarchy should follow a logical flow that helps a user learn to use your product in the most helpful way. For example, you probably don't want to begin your documentation by showing your customers how to use the more advanced functions without first showing them the basics of how your product works. And I see this all the time, is that they put the documentation up, up on the knowledge base and they say, here's how you can use the most advanced features first, when someone's simply just looking for a get started tutorial. One of the major navigation elements of user documentation is to create a table of contents, or TOC. It's a tree of nodes reflecting each topic in the documentation. It repeats the hierarchy of titles in the given text. This is convenient for bigger products with complex structures. So cross-linking pages within a user manual can be essential. And we often see this with things with a product portfolio that has many different products within it. Like Microsoft has Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, and many other products that they need to link together in an effective way. It's a convenient means of navigation since it feels natural for anyone who has dealt with a computer. The logic is simple. You can trace back every parent help topic just like in a file manager. So let's not forget to apply a table of contents to your next user manual. Now that we're almost halfway through our video, the next essential element of user documentation is to make your content searchable. It gives users easier access to your content and helps them find solutions on their own. Similar to what we saw in the examples of Evernote and HubSpot, solutions are within your reach at any given moment as product users. You don't have to call support every time you want to know something about the product. Creating accessible content is another crucial element of user documentation. This entails ensuring that electronic documentation adheres to standards of accessibility for people who may be blind or visually impaired, deaf or hard of hearing, or may have cognitive disabilities. 
Remember, many of your customers need this to fully understand and fully access your user documentation. Don't leave them behind. What this means is often making your text easy to read on mobile, including meta description for images and ensuring that it's easily able to be found. Now we are down to our last three elements of user documentation. First, a good design is what makes users stick with it. Give them a document that they wanna look at and they'll be more likely to use it. Design materials with your users and customers in mind. Make it usable, friendly, with short paragraphs. Next, feedback from real users and our beta testers. You can't create a great manual until you've listened to the people outside of your organization who actually use the products. Learn their pain points and try to address them as best as you can. Find out what they need to know in order to best use your products. While some of it may be obvious, I guarantee you'll learn a few things as long as you listen appropriately. And finally, create links to other documentation. Make sure your customers have access to more of your organization's resources on how to be successful with your products. For electronic user documentation, this can be as simple as providing links to tutorials, FAQs, user forums, and more. But even print documentation can include things like website addresses and phone numbers for further support. Readers use lists, especially when investigating something deeper. It gives them a quick idea of how well a feature is represented in a user manual. And adding an index can be of much help for readers looking for a description or mention of a certain feature. Alongside search, this is a sure way to find a whole list of relevant help topics with just a couple of clicks. An index can be multi-level. This means you can add child terms to a broader parent one. And this adds visual representation to the most difficult concepts. It's important to keep on using vertical lists across your documentation. This is how you make solutions readable. So first thing here is introduce the list by defining the series. So what's in it? Number two, make the list items grammatically parallel. So that means often starting with a verb in each item. Now to give you an idea of what you shouldn't do, here's a bad example. Follow these three steps to download your email. Number one, click the mailbox icon. Two, input your ID. If you need an ID, call security. Three, the system saves the email to disk. As you can see, it's missing parallel verbs and includes extra information that should be put elsewhere. So it's simply a no-go. On the contrary, this is a good example of how you can create a simple vertical list. Use these guidelines for simple vertical lists. One, introduce a list with a lead-in phrase or clause the lead-in doesn't need to be a complete sentence. The list items can complete the grammar started by the lead-in, and we'll see an example of that in just a little bit. And we have two here, punctuate the lead-in with a colon. And three, use simple vertical lists when the list items do not need to be emphasized and are listed vertically merely for ease of reading. And four, use sentence style capitalization on list items and five here, begin run over lines under the text of the list item, not the regular left margin. This format is called the hanging indent style. So if you ever see when you are writing a headline, you have one word hanging down, you wanna avoid that as much as possible. Keep it all up in one line. And avoid producing vertical lists in which two or more list items begin with the same word or words, as in this example. In this session, you will learn how to get business processes and systems to scale business growth. And it's going to start the same way again, how to build out financial teams to drive and support growth, and how to so on and so forth. You simply want to avoid that. To revise, incorporate the reoccurring word or phrase into the introductory phrase and revise any list items that begin with different wording so that they conform with the others. And we'll see what that looks like here. In this session, you'll learn how to get business processes and systems to scale to business growth, build out financial teams to drive and support growth, build these important pillars within an audit business control mindset and secure managed financing to support corporate growth strategy. As you can see, the how-to was removed from each one of those. Now, as we had mentioned before, user documentation takes many forms. Video game documentation tells you which buttons to push to shoot the bad guys. Software documentation shows you what your purchase can do and how to do it. And tax forms come with guides on how to properly fill them out. Lawn mowers and leaf blowers have product guides to show you how to start the engines and where to refill the fuel. 
Like forms, there are various methods to make knowledge bases available. A website is usually the best way to make them available for all users. However, consider the fact that people with disabilities will also be using it. As we talked about before, accessibility is important. Use the method which you think is the most suitable. Help files should be very user friendly, fast, easy to use, and can be accessed offline. Online support offers a larger amount of information and can be accessed and often updated from any device and is often faster. Lastly, printed manuals are easy to find. You can browse through them and work even without a computer. They work best for out of the box products. So you can think of if you're buying furniture on Amazon. User documentation is important because it provides an avenue for users to learn. And that means they figure out how to use something, the features, they learn the tips and tricks, how to resolve common problems. Without it, a user may be left without a clue. And even though you have a great product, they have no idea how to use it. And there we have it. We just finished discussing user documentation and how it eases your journey as a user. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Josh and I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ. If you're looking to break into technical writing, make sure to check out our certification courses. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel and like the video so you can keep up to date with everything technical writing. And I'll see you on some of our following videos. Cheers.